Hello everyone and welcome to our calculus notes for section 4.4. Today we're talking about the fundamental theorem of calculus. Dun, da, da, da. And here we finally arrived. It's a big day for us. Now informally, the fundamental theorem of calculus states that differentiation and definite integration are inverse operation. In the same sense that division and multiplication are inverse operation. So one undoes the other. So here is the fundamental theorem of calculus. And this is such a simple, simple process. And it is so very powerful. All that stuff we were doing with sums and trying to, to find the limit of the sums takes a lot of work. And the fundamental theorem of calculus is so simple uh, that it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. It says, if a function f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, and the capital F is an antiderivative of f on the interval a to b, then the definite integral from a to b of our function f of x dx equals the antiderivative of f evaluated at b minus the antiderivative of f evaluated at a. Okay, so that, that's it. It's that simple. So all we have to do is find the antiderivative of f, plug in b, and then plug in a, and subtract the 2. So provided you can find an antiderivative of f, you now have a way to evaluate a definite integral without having to use the limit of a sum. And the definite integral is going to equal our area under the curve. So we have a way of finding this without dealing with all those silly rectangles, left endpoints, right endpoints. We can just look at our function, find its antiderivative, and then evaluate the definite integral. Now when applying the fundamental theorem of calculus, the following notation is pretty convenient. And so we're going to be using this. So the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx equals the antiderivative, or capital F of x, from a to b. Okay, and so notice just this line here, and a to b. And what this is going to notate is the antiderivative evaluated at b minus antiderivative evaluated at a. Now, when using the fundamental theorem of calculus, it's not necessary to include your constant of integration c because notice, it would get subtracted anyway. Okay, so this capital F of B would have a plus C, and then this capital F of A would have a plus C, and they, they would get subtracted, and the C would be gone. Okay, so let's evaluate some of these integrals using our new best friend, the fundamental theorem of calculus. So the very first thing we want to do is find an antiderivative of x squared minus 3. So an antiderivative, we're going to use the power rule for integration. So it's been a while, so let's just review it. Okay, so if we recall the power rule for integration, we have our constant a x to the n dx. And this is going to be a times x to the n plus 1. So remember, we add 1 to the exponent. And then we divide by that n plus 1. And then we had that plus c. But for fundamental theorem of calculus, that's not going to matter. So if we have x squared, this would become x to the third over 3. And if we have negative 3, well, that's going to be minus 3x. Now our notation is going to tell us that this needs to be evaluated from 1 to 2. Okay, so there we went and found the antiderivative and wrote it in our notation from 1 to 2. So here, all we need to do now is substitute 2 in for x. Okay, so we're going to get 2 cubed over 3 minus 3 times 2. And then subtract, substituting 1 in for x. So that's going to be 1 cubed over 3 minus 3 times 1. And if we evaluate this, we're going to have our definite integral. So this becomes uh, 8 over 3 minus 6, and then minus 
1 over 3 minus 3. And uh, if we did all of this, 6 is really 18 thirds, so this is negative 10 thirds minus, okay, and then 3 is 9 thirds, so 1 minus 9 is negative 8 thirds. So all in all, this is going to equal negative 2 thirds. Okay, because negative 10 minus a negative 8 is negative 2. So now we can evaluate this integral very quickly, and we don't have to worry about the sum anymore. Let's move on to letter B. Here we have the definite integral from 1 to 4 of 3 root x dx. Now before we can take our antiderivative here, we will want to rewrite this so it's in a power form. So this will be 1 to 4 of 3 times x to the 1 half dx. Try this on your own and then go ahead and see if you can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate the definite integral. So go ahead and pause the video, come on back to check your work. Alright, welcome back. So you should have gotten the antiderivative of 3x to the 3 halves over 3 halves and this needs to be evaluated from 1 to 4 and just to simplify this, so we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, and we end up with 2x to the 3 halves from 1 to 4. So we're going to plug 4 in for x, and then 1 in for x, and subtract the 2. And from here, you can use a calculator to evaluate this, and we're going to get 14. Okay, and this works with anything. It even works with all of our trig functions. So uh, if we want to evaluate the definite integral from 0 to pi over 4 of secant squared x dx, we just have to remember what is the antiderivative of secant squared. Well, that's going to be tan. So this is going to be tan x from 0 to pi over 4. And using the fundamental theorem of calculus, we just substitute pi over 4, and then we substitute 0. And tan of pi over 4 is 1, tan of 0 is 0, and so this is going to equal 1. Now, something like this, we wouldn't have been able to do using our summation notation because we didn't have our formulas for the sums of our trig functions. But now, this becomes so super simple, and in just a couple steps, we can find this definite integral. Now, just because the fundamental theorem of calculus is pretty simple doesn't mean that we don't have to think, okay? Sometimes, like in this example, we have the absolute value of 2x minus 1, and you can see that this graph uh, curves right here. And so we want to think about this uh, by breaking it up into two separate functions, okay? And so we can see it's going to be this function from 0 to wherever it hits, and it looks like it's going to be here at 1 half, and then it's going to be this function from 1 half to 2. So let's go ahead and rewrite this now as the sum of the two integrals. So, so from 0 to 1 half, and this function now is going to be the negative of 2x minus 1 dx, and then we're going to add this to this function, which is going to be the integral from 1 half to 2 of our function 2x minus 1 dx. Now we want to actually apply the fundamental theorem of calculus for each one of these to come up with the area under this curve. Okay, so let's go ahead and distribute this negative before we deal with anything, so I'm going to change that to a positive, and a negative here, and a positive here. Okay, and let's go ahead and find the antiderivative now of negative 2x plus 1. Well, it's going to be negative 2x squared over 2, and then plus x. And this is going to get evaluated from 0 to 1 half. 
And then over here, the antiderivative of 2x minus 1 is going to be 2x squared over 2 minus x. And that gets evaluated from 1 half to 2. Okay, so we can see here the 2's are going to cancel. And that'll make it a little bit easier for us. So let's go ahead and apply the fundamental theorem of calculus here. So negative 1 half squared plus 1 half. And then we're going to subtract, well, 0 squared and then plus 0. So we're really going to subtract 0 there. And plus, we're going to have 2 squared minus 2 minus 1 half squared minus 1 half. All right, and from here, I mean, you could plug this whole thing into your calculator. You could work it out uh, by hand, uh, do things in your head. So if we square 1 half, that becomes 1 fourth. So it's negative 1 fourth plus 1 half. Well, that's just 1 fourth minus 0. And then over here, this becomes uh, 4 minus 2 is 2. And then minus, well, this is going to be 1 fourth minus a half. So that's minus 1 fourth. And then you can see we'll change the signs here. So we have 1 fourth plus 2 plus 1 fourth. And our final answer is 2 and 1 half or 2.5. All right, the next example, it says find the area under the graph of y equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 2 from x equals 0 to x equals 2. So we've had some practice with writing this as a definite integral. And so that's going to be definite integral from 0 to 2 of our function 2x squared minus 3x plus 2. And that's dx. And so now we can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. And we get 2x cubed over 3 minus 3x squared over 2 plus 2x. And this is going to be evaluated from 0 to 2. All right, so we'll go ahead and substitute 2 in here. So we get 2 times 2 cubed over 3 minus 3 times 2 squared over 2 plus 2 times 2. And then minus, we'll substitute in 0. Well, 0 cubed, 0 squared, 0. So we're just subtracting 0 there. And so here we get 8 times 2 is 16. So 16 thirds minus, well, 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12 over 2 is 6, and then 2 times 2 is 4, so plus 4. And if we change all these into thirds, we have 16 thirds minus 18 thirds plus 12 thirds, and this is going to give us a total of 10 thirds. So here we have the area under this curve equals 10 thirds. All right, so that is using the fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate definite integrals and also to find areas under curves.